It's here, Batman and Mr. Freeze, Sub-Zero, deep within the frozen Arctic. Zorro! The love of Victor Freeze was shattered. There aren't any deceased donors that match. Then we'll have to use a live donor. Hi, Dad. Sorry I'm late. Hang on. Hey guys, this is Cash here with another movie review, and this time I'll be reviewing Batman and Mr. Freeze, Sub-Zero. This movie was the direct sequel to Batman Mask of the Phantasm. This movie was released in the spring of 1988 following a production delay. But, ironically enough, guys, it different itself from the live-action bomb of Batman and Robin. Back when Batman and Robin was busy stinking up many movie theaters, the good folks and our friends Warner Brothers Animation Department were putting the final touches on Sub-Zero as they all called it. It was a straight to DVD release meant to act as a merchandising tie-in. So remember this is not a Schumacher film. This is a different movie itself and its lead villain in this movie is Mr. Freeze. So with that being said guys when the movie finally arrived in um, stores in the spring of 1988, there was a slight delay, ironically enough, enough helping distance its itself from the live action movie Batman and Robin, which was a piece of crap. It proved what most fans already knew. And most fans that were folks behind the Batman animated series were once doing the real work. So by presenting a rousing adventure, a gripping mystery, and a storyline that touched one of the most tragic sides of the villain Sub-Zero, aka Batman and Mr. Freeze, was born. So ineffective, there was a slap in the face for the live action crew, which was Batman and Robin. George Clooney was the most terrible Batman, and this was a chance to redeem Mr. Freeze. Just as the animated Batman adventures that came before the and after had proven that was how the Cape Crusader should have been done. So you know a sequel was in the sorts and Batman Mask of the Phantasm Sub-Zero also served to bridge the gap between Fox's Batman the Animated Series and the revamped the new Batman Adventures. So if you guys didn't know that there's also which was about to begin airing on Cartoon Network or did air which you guys can currently buy it this would act as the final appearance of Dick Grayson voiced by Lauren Lester as Robin the character would soon be promoted to Nightwing so knowing that Batman fans know what I'm talking about here the rest of you don't worry guys you don't really need to know this stuff to enjoy a movie as a result Robin will get more screen time in this movie he and the movie he had during most of the early cartoon episodes he didn't get much screen time in the earlier cartoon episodes so this is a chance for Robin to redeem redeem himself in other words we get to see Robin kick some serious ass most notably is it in a sensational motorcycle chase that finds him pulling stunts to wow even the bad guys but despite the raise in plot in importance, Robin Dick, Robin A.K. Dick, isn't the center of the film. So, no, no, that distraction would be belong to the notorious Mr. Freeze, and this is where he gets to show himself. He's voiced by Michael and Sarah, the wicked scientist who could only survive in Arctic temperatures. Remember that. Remember that or at least at a bulky cold suit designed to keep him alive and mobile and if you're familiar with Freeze guys only through his Arnold Schwarzenegger incarnation the Iceman cometh sorry I had to do that you got the basics down guns that shoot ice dying wife chronologically frozen but you're missing the deadly seriousness behind this character he's not all about freezing people Freeze, formerly Dr. Victor Freeze, is an evil man right out, but his quest to keep his wife alive has turned him into some crime lord. So if you guys didn't know that, that's a brief Batman history. 
like the best members of Batman's rogue gallery, guys, there's a sadness behind the villainy. And in both Batman TV series and Sub Zero, the filmmakers never shown from this. The cartoon format is never used an excuse to make this character well cartoonish. So in every episode that was released in the Batman animated series and the Batman Beyond series, every episode with Mr. Freeze, you felt really bad for the guy. And every episode was ironically amazing. This this character is one of my favorite characters. He's very underrated, but in this adventure, Freeze's wife is on the brink of death, and only an organ transplant will save her life. But with no deceased donor available, there's a problem. We have to use a live donor, as Mr. Freeze decides. And how this is for a problem, the only compatible donor available is no other than Barbara Gordon, better known to you guys as Batgirl. Sub-Zero isn't as sharp as Phantasm, guys, which sets the standard for Batman animation and its lacks that clever surprises of the direct video features that followed the Batman Superman movie and Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. So, in a way, the clunkiness of the cartoon features with some dialogue that doesn't quite flow with the... But we also have a story that feels a bit more rushed in places in order to keep the running time brief in a forced blend of traditional and computer animation that occasionally doesn't mesh. Or should I say mesh? Whatever. But note this. And yet, it's and to some extent, it's still miles ahead of anything Warner has to offer in their live action line. So again, save Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. The filmmakers here, led by director Boyd Kirkland, if I'm pronouncing that right, he, he has love and loss with a few sci-fi wizardly thrown in for good measure. So, I mean, that's good. There's a death to Mr. Freeze's pain here and his frozen heart. Metaphor alert has shut his emotions, turning him to villainy as the coast of his... Not coast. Cost of his soul. So, here we the filmmakers present Freeze in such a way that you almost want to root for the poor guy and cry and die I'm just kidding and watch also as Commissioner Gordon reacts to his daughter's kidnapping he's gonna go psycho you never saw that kind of raw motion in this live-action picture and that's what brings me to say that this is one of my favorite animated films besides Mask of the Phantasm Sub-Zero also takes more risk than you expect from such a mainstream animated feature Michael McCalston if I'm pronouncing that right musical score layers jazz and swing on top of the traditional action and orchestral scenes that you expect from a Batman flick then again the script keeps its heroes out of costume and in their secret identities longer and more than you think trusting its mister mystery tingled plotline to carry the film so sure there's tons of comic book action but Kirkland and co-writer Randy Rogue go by the same idea used to make the animated series such a success. They place story first. Yes, they place story. The result is a movie that's smarter, richer, and more involving than most direct-to-video cartoons. The film's video premiere came pretty much under pop culture radar and therefore the film spent the past five years living a life as the unknown cousin in Batman franchise. Fans loved it, of course, but limited promotion kept its reputation among the general renting public at your local blockbuster, just as another cartoon. And for that matter, that's too bad. None of the Batman animated features are just cartoons. They're prime examples of the best of these characters have to offer. So with my final verdict, and giving you my thoughts on what I think about this film, I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5, notably to the fact that I still love Mask of the Phantasm, which is a 5 out of 5 for me, but this is a direct sequel to that. The villain makes you feel emotional, he makes you feel for his character. You get more screen time with Dick Grayson, aka Robin, which is awesome. You get to see Batgirl, you get to see Commissioner Gordon going after Barbara. 
and just the raw emotion with Kevin Conroy as Batman is just outstanding guys so with that being said it's a four out of five for me I'll be reviewing Batman mask of the Batwoman or, or something like I don't know the Batwoman mystery or whatever I'm gonna be reviewing that next and as well as I just finished watching Batman animated series one through four I'll be reviewing that I am also on season three of Batman Beyond so stick out for that review too it's gonna be coming within the next couple of weeks so you guys know what to do comment rate subscribe let me know what you guys think on the comments below greatly appreciated until next time guys this is cash with another movie review peace out sub-zero from warner brothers family entertainment now available on video cassette and dvd